Well, good morning, Rebecca. It looks like the weather is changing every day that we've got here. This morning, I want to talk about an association with obesity, being overweight and obese, and type 2 diabetes or diabetes. Both diseases, obesity and being uh, uh, overweight with obesity, uh, causes high blood pressure, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. So what's the correlation with the two? 70% of adults are overweight, 20% of children are overweight. When they're obese, the body will produce anti-insulin autoantibodies. Now, big long medical words. What it basically means is your insulin doesn't work, and if insulin doesn't work, then the blood sugar that runs around in the bloodstream can't go into the cells where it gives us energy. When that occurs, the blood sugar stays in the bloodstream. It becomes elevated. When it becomes elevated, that's diabetes. If your fasting blood sugar is 126 or higher, then that's diabetes. If your hemoglobin A1C is above 6, then you're going to be in the diabetic range. So be very, 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 very careful that you watch. Now, what happens if we lose some of our obesity? If we lose our obesity, then those anti-insulin antibodies go away. The blood sugar is able, the insulin works, the blood sugar is able to go into the cells. What do we have to do? Well, it's the same thing we talk about. We've got to eat less and exercise more. When we exercise, that drives blood sugar into the cells where the insulin can work. And when we lose weight, the obesity makes it where we don't build those anti insulin antibodies. So we need to work on the obesity. We need uh, to work on diabetes. Diabetes uh, increased incidence of hypertension, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, uh, blindness, amputation. And now questions from the year. Dr. Bob, why is GERD so dangerous? Well, GERD is reflux disease. When we swallow food, it goes into the stomach. Some of that food sometimes comes back up into the esophagus, where it can cause heartburn, acid indigestion. As it gets higher up in the esophagus, it can actually cause some strictures are there, and we may have to have the esophagus dilated. As the reflux even comes up higher, like sometimes at nighttime, it can cause hoarseness in the morning, and it can even get back where the sinuses are and cause recurrent sinus disease. So what can we do about reflux? Well, we don't eat before we go to bed. We don't eat the foods that upset our stomach and give us heartburn and acid indigestion. You stay away from those spicy foods and elevate the head of your bed just a couple of inches. It's supposed to be four, but just a couple of inches, you'll be surprised what it does. So we're going to watch our obesity, watch diabetes, watch reflux disease. Be careful what you eat and when you eat it. Now, Sean, back to you for a healthy, healthy Sunday.